Cole from Sydney English Teacher and from The Successful English Learner by Sydney English Teacher and I'm here with you today for episode number 17 of Nicole's Weekly Words. Welcome <laughs> and thank you for joining me whether you're here live with me on my Facebook page, in my Facebook group or on my YouTube channel or whether you are watching a replay. <laughs> I welcome you and I thank you for making vocabulary learning a priority. For those of you who are new and who have never watched or participated in Nicole's Weekly Words before, let me quickly tell you what it's all about. It's my free vocabulary learning lesson, live weekly vocabulary learning lesson for you. Um, every week I teach you five great new words, um, not only how to recognize them and understand them, but more importantly how to use them. And I give you lots and lots of detailed explanations about their meaning, as well as lots of example sentences about how these words are used. So um, yeah, keep coming back, <laughs> keep learning, keep enjoying enjoying this vocabulary learning um, opportunity and if you have any questions please do ask I'm here to help if I don't see your comments during the live lesson don't panic I will have a look later and I will get back to you I will comment back so what are we doing today? We are focusing on the letter I. That's right, we're continuing our theme of a letter of the alphabet every week <laughs> and we're up to the letter I. I've chosen five great words that all begin with the letter I and I'm sure that not only will you enjoy learning them but using them as well. So do make an effort to use these words throughout the week and to practice writing sentences um, as often as possible um, because we want to make sure that by the end of the week these words are your own <laughs> and you can use them naturally and automatically. Sounds great doesn't it? <laughs> well let's begin with word number one. <laughs> so word number one today is inept. Inept. Can you say that? Great. So this is an adjective, obviously, and inept simply means that you have no skill for a particular task. You know, you're unable to do something properly. You're not very skilled or not very competent at something. <laughs> So inept means that you're generally incompetent or that you lack skills in a particular area. You know, you could be inept in terms of your emotions or in socializing with other people or maybe even um, in your common sense, I suppose. Uh, you could even be inept in terms of your memory. <laughs> So really, um, that's inept. Um, it can also be used to describe you physically. You know, you could be physically awkward or clumsy and you're inept there as well. You know, if you're not very good at sports or something like that or catching a ball, <laughs> then you're inept. So that's the word inept. Let me give you some examples. So we would say, I have always been inept at sport. It's never been a strength of mine, and honestly, it's something that I'm not really interested in. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> Next, she was criticized for her inept handling of a very delicate situation. Or, we need to build his confidence before he goes to university next year. Right now, he's socially inept and completely uncomfortable in groups of people, especially if girls are included. <laughs> so there you go, some examples for the word inept. <laughs> Next, let's look at word number two for this week, and it is illegible. Illegible. Can you say that? <laughs> Great. So look, illegible really is used to describe when writing is very unclear. You know, it's very difficult to read. Um, it's written so badly or someone has such bad handwriting 
that you can't even guess what the word is or what it should be. <laughs> it's really not clear enough to read, I suppose. So, you know, the best example of this is a doctor's handwriting. You know, when they write you a script and then you look at it afterwards and you think, I have no idea what they just wrote. What are these words? <laughs> that is illegible. <laughs> So really we can talk, um, use illegible to talk about handwriting or the printed word, you know, where it's impossible or almost impossible to read because it has been scribbled or maybe it has been printed really badly. Um, maybe the ink ran out or it's become faded or something like that. Um, you could also say that something is not legible or that it is indecipherable. So there are two alternatives there for illegible. Oh, also unreadable, I suppose, would be another one. <laughs> so some examples, we might say, his handwriting has become more and more illegible with age. Or I was unable to use my prescription for my medicine because the chemist was unable to decipher my doctor's illegible handwriting. <laughs> there you go, that's illegible. Next, let's move on to word number three for this week. And I've chosen the word impromptu. Impromptu. Can you try? That's it. Impromptu. Impromptu. That's it. Perfect. <laughs> so, if you use the word impromptu, it's used to describe when you do something without planning, without organizing it first, you know, without warning, um, without rehearsal, I suppose you could say. Um, so doing something impromptu means that you do it on the spur of the moment. There's no planning in advance. You just do it now <laughs> without that preparation. So really something is done or something is said without first planning or preparing for it. Um, you know, it could be a performance. It could be singing a song or playing a musical instrument. It could even be giving a speech. All of these could be impromptu if you haven't prepared or rehearsed or planned beforehand. <laughs> um, yeah, so you could really say, I suppose, that something is improvised or unrehearsed, and that is impromptu. <laughs> Some examples, he gave an impromptu performance, and everyone was mesmerized by his incredible singing voice. Ooh, sounds great. <laughs> or, we had an impromptu party to celebrate the end of the school year. Yay! <laughs> or, his impromptu speech at the gathering was so impressive, you would never have thought that he didn't prepare anything in advance. <laughs> Some people are so talented in that, aren't they? <laughs> okay, word number four this week. We're looking at impartial. Impartial. Can you say that? Great. So when you're impartial, it means that you're being fair and you're not being influenced by anything or anyone. You know, you don't really support or lean towards any side of an argument. Um, you stay in the middle, I suppose, and you stay neutral and fair um, to both opinions there. Um, and you're listening really carefully to both opinions, to both arguments, I suppose, without judging, really without supporting one or the other, without supporting a particular point of view. So that's impartial, you know. You don't support any of the sides that are involved in an argument or a debate or a speech. And for this reason, you're able to judge or you're able to consider something really fairly 
without really letting your own interest or your own opinion there influence you. Um, so yeah, we can really say that if you're impartial, you are unbiased. You are treating everyone equally and not letting your own opinion influence what they are saying or um, help you make a decision. Does that make sense? <laughs> so an example might be, the jury has given an impartial verdict after listening to all of the evidence. That's the perfect example there, you know. In a law of court, you know, in the court, um, a jury really needs to be impartial. They can't walk into that courtroom and already have their opinion about who is guilty and who is not guilty. So impartial there means that they sit and they listen to both sides carefully. They look at the evidence carefully and they make a decision according to that not according to what they believed before they entered that courtroom. Does that make sense? <laughs> Another example, she is the best person to speak to because she always gives impartial advice. <laughs> That's so good. Another quick example, in this position, it is important to give impartial, sorry, to give an impartial evaluation of the applicant's qualifications and experience, and not to consider their age, race, gender, or marital status. So there you go, the word impartial. <laughs> Let's look at the last word for today, word number five, which is imperative imperative. Can you say that? Brilliant. So if something is imperative, it is very, very, very important. It is essential. I suppose you could say it is crucial. You know, think of it as something that is extremely important or maybe even urgent. You know, it is necessary to do this. It can't be avoided. So that's imperative. Very, very, very important. <laughs> Some examples of how we use this. We use it in terms of it is imperative that followed by a full sentence. Or it is imperative to followed by a base verb. Or it is imperative for someone to do something. So there are the three forms of imperative there. Let me give you some example sentences. During the COVID crisis, it is imperative for all of us to wear masks and to practice social distancing. I'm sure you agree. <laughs> or the Prime Minister has emphasised that it is imperative to prepare for the bushfire season so that we can avoid the same disastrous conditions as last year. Absolutely. And the last example here is, it is imperative that all parents sign the permission form before their children can attend the excursion. So there you go. There are words for this week. I hope you've really enjoyed uh, listening to this lesson and learning a little bit more about the words and what they mean. <laughs> the words for this week are inept, illegible, impromptu, impartial and imperative. So your job now is to go and practice these words. You can watch this video again, take notes if that helps you learn, but my suggestion would be to go and visit my Facebook group, The Successful English Learner by Sydney English Teacher, where you will find a worksheet that you can download for episode 17, which has all of the words from today listed, as well as a detailed explanation of their meaning and the example sentences that I've given you. There's also room for you to write your own notes and your own example sentences. So please do that. 
This week I'd also like to challenge you to try and use at least one of these words every day. You know, write it on a post-it note, write it on your hand, write it on your forehead if you have to. <laughs> to remind yourself to use the words and I promise if you follow these steps by the end of the week these words will have been internalized they will be your own and you'll be able to use them confidently and automatically so that sounds great doesn't it <laughs> Time to go and practice. Have a wonderful week. Thank you for listening and do come back again next week for episode 18. <laughs> Bye everyone.